All right, I have something a little different I want to share with you today. It's one of those stainless steel mesh fire pits you likely have seen on the internet somewhere and a steel tripod to go with it. If you're interested in hearing more about them, keep watching. Okay, so this is the mesh fire pit all collapsed down into this relatively small container, roughly yeah, about nine, maybe nine and a half inches, two and a half inches across. It does have some weight to it though, I will say that. And of course I will put the dimensions both in the collapse and the assembled state, as well as the weight in the video description. And again, this is just a first use video. I just wanted to introduce this to you so I can get your thoughts and opinions on it. So, and this is the tripod. So. Yeah, when they were offered to me and I accepted them, it was on the condition that I have the tripod and the fire pit because I don't know about you, but I've seen these fire pits in action and I can't say I was all that impressed with them. I mean, they work. Uh, I guess it was, how do you use them? You know, it's not a, there's no rack for putting a pot on or anything. It's just a fire pit so you can look at and enjoy a fire. Okay, reason enough, but it'd be a lot more useful if you had some way of suspending a pot over it. And that's where this tripod comes in. So the combination, I think, is, uh, works at will, as you'll see, I think will work out quite well. Again, this has some weight. This is not aluminum. This is not a lightweight, fragile uh, tripod by any means. It is steel, and I'll show you more in a minute, but let's get the fire pit assembled. So inside, uh, there are a number of components. It's a good idea to do this somewhere so that you don't lose anything. All right, so I just want to check and see. There is a couple of spare components. Okay, one of them must have come out with this. Where are my components? Oh, they're all wrapped around the poles. Okay, <laughs> no problem. Uh, and it might be that these components that are separate from the assembly, it might be that this is a, a con for this in case you lose it. However, I think if I do lose any of these components, this will still work. Let me explain. So it begins with this center portion. This is the pivot area for the four stakes. And I have... Uh, extensions that go on both ends of these. Uh, yeah, so let's, let me just show you one of the extensions. This is a footing extension. What I mean by that is it's got the little rubber footing on the bottom. You can see a little loop sticking out of the top there. Now, that's not essential for the operation of this, but it is what helps to hold it in place. You just kind of put it in at an angle and slide it in and it holds it in place. Let's might as well show you one of the other ones. This is a top piece. It has the same little loop on it and you can put it in. So now you can see what it looks like fully extended. All right, I'll just take a quick second. I'll put the rest of them on so you can see what this looks like. Okay, there are the support rods, the legs, I guess, for the fire mesh pit all assembled for them each leg with three pieces to reach that height. I think what I'll do is I'm going to reposition the camera and I'll put this fire pit down right about where the tripod is now so that I can show you uh, putting the rest of it together, get a little bit closer for a little bit more detail. All right, so you can see the fire pit. This is how you would set it up on the ground before you put the mesh area on top. I'm thinking right now it's sitting about nine, 10 inches off of the ground. I mean, how much do you need? That should be enough. Uh, that, that's kind of nice when you've got snowy surface like I have here, or in the summertime, if you've got a combustible surface, that should give me enough clearance so I don't get a lot of heat transfer. I have some other thoughts on this in terms of safety that we'll talk about when we get to it, but let's finish assembling it. So here is the stainless steel mesh wire grill, whatever you might call it, folded over, Little, uh, what do you call them, holes in there, <laughs> grommets in each of the four corners. And what holds this on the end of these rods are these clips, stainless steel clips. And I'll show you putting them on. This to me may be one of the weak point or at least vulnerable points for this system. Let me just show you how it goes on first. In that if you lose these clips, the question is, can you? use it anyway. I think you can. Uh, you'll just need something else, something else to do the job of the clips. And I think, you know, even a, a stainless steel bolt will hold these on. This is just designed to hold it on securely. 
The system did come with one spare. I don't know if this is a common item, if I can get it elsewhere. Again, a lot of unknowns with this as it's I've had it for a little bit of time. I just haven't had an opportunity to get it out. All right, last one. All right, that's the fire pit assembled. Stainless steel, I, I will tell you my first impression is, will it last? It looks like a tremendous amount of airflow, but when you look at the mesh very, very closely, it looks like you're getting about a 50-50 oh, airflow to solid area. It's hard to judge. Maybe a little bit more airflow than that, which is, again, a fair amount of airflow. The mesh does sink in, as you can see, so the weight of your logs, depending on how much fuel you're going to put on, will hold this down some. Uh, my first thought, and I guess we'll see in a minute because it is breezy, is whether or not I'll have a lot of wind carrying sparks and coals and things off of the top of this. But uh, all right, so that's that set up. Now, the other piece to set up, and I may as well get it set up at the same time, is the tripod. So let's put that together. You know, some time ago, I purchased one of those tripods. You may have seen them as well. They are, I guess, about three feet long, the legs. They're aluminum. They screw into each other. Then they screw into a top piece. Lightweight, compact, about 12 inches long. If they're going to make three feet, it would have to be 12 inches long. Um, you know, it's not a bad little tripod. It doesn't look like it's going to be very heavy duty. I would use it over a very small fire, a very small fire pit. This is something else again. This is, this is heavy duty. No question about it. How durable it'll be over the long term? Well, that's part of what I want to determine. All right. So here we go. These are 22, 24 inches in length. They are a, it's, I don't know if it's anodized. I don't think that's the right word. It reminds me of parkerizing that used to see on old firearms. It is a flat, matte, somewhat textured surface, but it is steel underneath, stainless steel, I'm not sure. Even the piece at the top where the, the uh, tripod legs come together, they have stainless steel bolts holding them in. It just says heavy duty to me. On the bottom are pointed feet, which are, uh, again, steel of some type. I, and I confirm this not only by the weight, but, but with a magnet, of course. All right, so let's extend the legs. They have the pop buttons to keep them from extending too far. Uh, you'll hear it click in a second. There's one. Let me show you the other one. Now, down here, it has two positions. Don't ask me why. That's not what I use to adjust my pot height. I use, of course, the chain that I'll show you that came with it in a minute. So I might as well take it out to its fullest extension. All right, there's that one. Let me do the other two. All right, there it is with the legs fully extended. All right, I think I'll do the same thing I did with the fire pit, which is I'll push the camera back and set this up over the fire pit and install the chain so you can see what the whole system looks like. All right, so I've assembled the tripod over top of the fire pit and I've... Uh, installed the chain. It comes up through the top. I'll give you some close-ups of what the chain looks like in a minute. Actually, I'll give you close-ups of the whole system. I have the chain pretty much at its maximum extension just to show you how low it will go. Now, remember, that's with the tripod legs fully extended. So if I needed to get height away or drop it further, if I needed to get height away, that's easy enough with the chain. But if I wanted to drop this any lower than it is, such as if I wasn't using this mesh fire pit and I wanted to use it over an open fire on the ground, then I would probably end up having to uh, drop the legs down. As they are telescopic, you can do that, which is also very cool to do. Okay, so I do have a pot hung over it. You can see I'm right down at pit height, but remember, if I get a fire under this, it is gonna drop into this mesh a little bit, which is what we're gonna do in a second. So why don't I bring the camera in a little closer. I'll give you some close-ups of the components, and then, of course, I'll get a fire started. All right, I'll walk in on the fire pit. I'll give you some close-ups of the fire pit itself first, and then I'll work my way up to the tripod. So you can see there are the clips going through the grommets, holding it in place. As I mentioned, it is all stainless steel. Now, I know my first question is, is how long will this last? So if you develop a lot of heat in this, 
Is it going to wear the stainless steel out? Will it start to rust? I guess that's what I'm going to find out. You can see the legs, all four of them, running through that square uh, device that holds everything together. All right, let's do the tripod. Working our way up with the tripod. You can see one of the little push buttons. You can see the chain, heavy duty. Each link is an inch and a quarter, so that's a heavy duty chain. There is the center portion, the top that holds everything together. Also steel, and the pin that you push through the chain to adjust its height. Stainless steel bolts as well. Yeah, it certainly gives the impression of strength. So obviously the next thing to do is to get some wood and get a fire going so I can boil some water. All right, let's get this party started. It took me a little bit to collect up what I needed. So you can see I have a bunch of birch bark here. I have a piece of older birch bark I'm laying down as a base. I probably don't need it, but I, I just decided to lay a base down on top of the mesh pit. No experience, not sure which way it should be used, but let's start with that. This off to my side here. Some very small, fine spruce twigs, some intermediate size spruce branches, mostly a little bit of maple, and then one good size, well, good size, four inch diameter spruce tree that volunteered to be a part of this experiment. So let's get this started using my Survive Outdoors Longer Plasma Lighter. Just need to get the birch bark lit first, there we go. Give the birch bark half a second. And I can put my little pieces on. So I've got the pot well up out of the way just to uh, have some room to work and I'll set it down in a minute once I get the fire well established. Ooh, nothing like birch bark and spruce twigs. I can start laying on my intermediate stuff right away. Airflow, lots of it. Too much? Well, that's what we'll see. If I was doing this on the ground here on the snow, I would have had to lay down a pretty good sized base to keep the moisture away from the fire. And of course, with this, I don't have to do that. So I am gonna build a good sized fire on this because I wanna see what happens. If you're worried about the woods, don't be. <laughs> we had snow, we had rain, it froze, we had more rain, everything is soaking wet, and there's a stream five feet off to, well, well, 15 feet off to the side here that I can reach over and get water, but uh, it would have to do a lot of damage before it could get down to anything combustible here. Wow, okay. I think I'll throw a few pieces of fuel on because it is a little bit damp on the outside. I did quarter it, but... And now I can hear it spitting. Okay, what I will do as this catches on and moves up through is I'll pull the camera back a little bit so you can see what's taking place and then I'll lower the pot on to get some water on for a boil. So I just pulled the camera back a little bit, give you a bit of a different angle. And uh, I'm gonna lower the pot down. So I'm pretty much in the flames. Let's try there. Still slightly above the flames. So a couple of thoughts so far. The wind does affect which way the heat's gonna go with this. More, well, probably as much as I had expected it to. You can probably see right now the uh, wind is carrying, it's not wind either, it's just a light breeze, is carrying a lot of the heat off in this direction. I mean, I can put my hand here, well, not for long, but I couldn't do that at the same pl place on the other side. That's my first observation. So yes, this, this mesh fire pit is quite affected by the wind. I guess it was no surprise, right? I, I did anticipate that. It's not it's sheltered behind some rocks or anything else. So one of the things you're gonna to have to be cautious of. Now, 
that may not be too big a deal if you're just sitting to watch a fire and enjoying it and enjoying the heat. But if you're trying to cook over it and you're trying to anticipate where the heat is going to be, that makes it a bit more of a challenge. Uh, here's another observation. It took a few minutes for the wood to really get caught. Now, it's all spruce well, with some maple mixed in, but pretty much all spruce, my main fuel is. That's why the snapping and popping that you're hearing right now, I would have thought that would have taken off a lot faster. Okay, truth is, it's not as dry as I had first anticipated. Okay, so not being dry certainly uh, contributed to being slow taking off. But the point I want to make is I can see in through the fuel to some beautiful red hot coals. So the fire is, you know, very uh, substantiated. It's, it's self-sustaining. It's not going to go out on me or anything. It might be slow, but it's not going out. But what the point I want to make is there's a whole bed of ash in the bottom of this fire pit that I would have thought would have fallen through more. Now, I should also show you that I can put my hand under here, about 10 inches underneath, but it, there's a lot of heat transferring down. I can barely put my hand under there. I couldn't come any closer than, oh geez, that's hot. So I guess my point is it is melting the ice underneath, but the ash, I think, is starting to slow the airflow down, so the fire is slowing down a little bit. I didn't anticipate that. That actually, in my mind, is a good thing. So that you don't get too much airflow. Airflow when you need it, when it first gets going, and then slows down as you go. Hard to make a judgment call when this is still the first fire. I think I can drop that pot down one more notch because I'm ready for coffee. All right. Uh, one inch or two above the flames. And I could move it off to one side. Now you can see even as I, as I talk, the uh, wind has shifted slightly. A lot of my flame is straight up, but it's also starting to move over to the other side. All right, not bad for a first test. I'm going to let this burn quite a bit longer. I've got a lot of fuel, might as well use it all up. But uh, when this water comes to a boil, I will make a cup of coffee, we'll sit down, we'll have a few closing thoughts on this. All right, slight change of plans. Uh, it occurs to me that it makes good sense to wait till this fire is completely out before I close the video out so I can show you what the first fire had for an effect on the, uh, the mesh screen itself. Of course, I'm interested to see that myself. The fire, by the way, is going wonderful and my water is boiling, but let me just set the coffee up and then I will uh, show you the fire one more time. Uh, I thought this, I might as well do this as well. This is a bit of a shout out. This is a mug. Absolute top guy Mark. Give thanks for his awesomeness. So, uh, no, I did not buy this for myself. This is a shout out to my cousin Laura who gave this to me as a Christmas gift. It is a nice enameled mug. And uh, I thought I would give her a public thank you for it because it's, it's a nice mug. Rampage coffee, of course. And my AeroPress. Three level scoops make a good strong cup today. Now I need to reach around and get my pot of water. If you haven't seen this pots before, this is one of the Pathfinder set. It was sent to be by mistake. Uh, it's like an extra large one of their mugs. Uh, there is a name for it. 48 ounce. Ooh, that's hot. All right, I gotta pour the water a little quickly. Give that a quick stir. And get the plunger on before it goes down too far because if you don't, you lose the vacuum and it all runs through because I want it to sit and steep for a few minutes. All right, so there's my coffee getting ready. Let me position the camera again, give you another view of the fire, and then we'll just have to wait it out for the fire to be finished so I can show you what it looks like when it's all said and done. Okay, sometime later, the fire has gone out. Uh, once I dumped the ash and a few hot coals into some water here and snow, uh, it 
seconds, really just seconds for the mesh to cool off where I could pick it up and handle it. In fact, it was easy enough to pick up by the legs to dump those coals. So uh, I don't know that I would do that with a fire, uh, the pit, fire pit full of fuel and fire, but you know, those remaining coals, yeah, they, they were easy enough to pick up by the bottom. Okay, so I've done nothing to this. I want to show this to you right up front so that you see it exactly as I do from the at the end of the first burn. So I'll get up and come in a little closer. Hopefully the camera will focus in on this. Good, I think I'm showing it. Um, ash. That's it. Uh, there is discoloration of the stainless steel, that kind of a rainbow effect you see with stainless steel and with titanium quite often. I see no deterioration. Actually, I see no difference other than the color between what it looked like when I started and what it looks like now. Will that be the same after 10, 12, 20 uses? Well, I guess only time will tell. Well, I've got you here, I might as well show you the close-up. Those are the pins that go in through the grommets that fit in through the end of the hole there. Hopefully that's all showing up on camera, great. All right, let's uh, have a few closing words. Okay, so as I uh, started out with, this is a first use, it is not a review, it is a preview. It is getting first impressions of it. Um, you have to start somewhere, you have to start <laughs> with a fire out in the woods, how else are you gonna do this? But I guess the point I wanted to make was, um, I'm not sold on this, but I like what I've seen so far. So far I see some pros and cons. Obviously the pro is your fire is off of the ground. It's easy to tend. It did melt snow, but, and there was heat coming out from under it, but it's not heat that would have combusted anything. Well, maybe, depending on how dry it was. But if I could hold my hand there for five seconds underneath this, it's probably safe for most surfaces. It was off of the wet, those are the pros. Cons, as I saw them so far, were very subject to breezes going from side to side. Uh, you know, I would lose my heat from side to side, but it is a fire pit. It's an open fire. It's not a small wood stove. That's the thing to remember. It's a fire pit and raised and subject to the wind. Uh, I like how the fire developed as it sank into the middle. The ash and coals went down into the center on their own with gravity, slowed some of the combustion down, but not so much that it choked airflow off. There was plenty of airflow all the way around. So uh, those are pros as well. As I mentioned from the beginning, this would not be of great value for me in the woods if I didn't have some way of suspending a pot or a pan over. Nice set of picnic maybe, or camping somewhere where you're just looking for the ambiance of a fire. But if you're trying to cook over it, you need to be able to suspend something. So that tripod, nothing to show you there. It uh, looks brand new. It that wasn't really subject to very much heat. It got heat, but not, not any significant heat. Without that, it would have been very difficult to cook over this. Now, I didn't show it. I have something that I'm working on to do in a later video. Suspending the pot on a tripod is not a problem. That's what they're designed to do. How about suspending a grill? Well, I have come up with something so I can suspend my Bitty Big Q grill, the one I showed from my Christmas gift uh, hoard of stuff that I was given. I've learned how to, oh, I've come up with a device for suspending that and I'll be able to grill directly over coals or place a pan on it very conveniently. I'll show that in a later video, more, more towards a review of the grill than this tripod and fire mesh pit because that'll work over any fire in fact uh, what I've come up with. Okay those are my initial thoughts. What I'm interested in hearing though is your thoughts. What did you see that you liked, didn't like from my demonstration? Maybe you own one of these and you have experience with it probably much more than I have, again first burn. But if you have some comments on it, I would like to hear those comments. If you have some tricks and tips and things that you've learned over time using this, please share those with the rest of us. I will have, like I said, 10, 12 more burns in this as often as I can. And then I'll come back and show you what it looks like and give you some more uh, experience with it. Did it degrade? Did it come apart? Did it rust? All the things you want to know before you spend your money. Okay, that's all I have for this video. Get out and explore. Take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.